Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out a tutorial course on ADSRSounds.com. So in this course, we are going to be discussing the key differences between subtractive synthesis and wavetable synthesis. So there are a couple reasons why I thought I would do this course. First, if you're just starting out to synths and you're kind of trying to wrap your head around how do I create cool sounds, or you're just completely lost at looking at a synth like Silent or Massive or Serum, there'll be a lot of useful information. Even if you're a more intermediate or advanced user, the way in which I'm going to present this, the, these topics will hopefully reinforce what you already know and strengthen your knowledge and also give you some cool tips and tricks on how to implement different sound design techniques with each type of synthesis. So I'm going to break this course up into separate videos so you can easily navigate it. If uh, you want to go straight to the subtractive or straight to the wavetable synth, you can do that. And then we're going to get into the later videos. We're going to see how we can create different sounds using different techniques in each type of synth. So this introduction video, I want to talk about a little bit about the fundamental differences behind these two different types of synthesis. I want to get this out of the way that, of course, there is going to be some crossover between the two because, after all, they are synthesizing sounds and there's always going to be elements that are similar. But I have found through all of my uh, sound design exploits that if you fundamentally see how a subtractive synth operates versus a wavetable synth, it really helps speed up the sound design process from getting from point A to point B. And it helps making creating sounds easier because you're, you, when you look at the synth, you kind of train yourself, okay, like right now I, we're looking at silent. This is a very common subtractive synthesizer. We'll talk about this in depth more later on in the, in the tutorial course, but I do have a skin on this. Just wanna say that there's a Skinner theme, so it's not green and brown. And yes, this DAW behind me is Logic with a Pro Tools theme. A lot of people ask me, did Pro Tools have a baby with Logic? The answer to that is yes. This is Logic with a Pro Tools theme. Google Logic X themes, they'll come up. Anyway, I digress. Getting back to this uh, subtractive synth that we are staring at. If you can train your brain to say, okay, I'm looking at a wavetable synth, I'm looking at a subtractive synth, or I'm looking at a hybrid synth, which employs both techniques, it makes creating sounds really easy. For instance, if you know and understand the reason behind how a sound is being generated and the ultimately the end goal of how to create a sound in a subtractive synth, for example, you're going to know what to do right away, and you're going to know what not to do, and that's more important. Sometimes doing thing, not doing things in sound design is more important than what you do. Now, using a synth like Massive, which is a probably the most popular wavetable soft synth of all time, if you're using that type of synth, you know what to do, you know where to start, and these different techniques will show you basically a roadmap on how to get to your, to your end goal quicker. And it becomes even cooler when you use a hybrid synth. For instance, let's take Dune 2, for example, by Synapse Audio. That synth is a hybrid synth where you can do subtractive virtual analog, that's one and the same, wavetable synthesis, and FM. Now, you need to have a grasp of all three of those to create sounds using those three different methods. Otherwise, you're just going to be kind of playing around, shooting in the dark, and hoping for a quality sound to come out of the synth. But if you understand the difference between, okay, let me layer a subtractive sound with a wavetable sound, and you understand what to do with each of them, those hybrid synths start to actually become powerful and they don't start, they kind of lose that burden of, oh my God, there's so many options, where do I start? So that's what this course is aimed at doing. So in the next video, we are going to be checking out Silent and we're going to be talking about subtractive synthesis. I'll see you there.